Yep, you guessed it, it's Sunday and it's time for me to hook you up once again. Today I've chosen a couple of pieces of 3 8 inch square bar, so that's about 10 millimeter square bar, and I'm going to do a forge welded hook. I think what I'm going to do is put a finial end on one of these bars, and then I'm going to put some little scrolls on opposite ends of the other bar. Actually, I'll probably do that on the short bar. Fold this one in half, trap that finial end in there, forge weld it all into one solid piece to make the hook, and that should give us a nice decorative three-piece element at the top. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like. I picture kind of a spade-type finial at the end with the little, little scrolls next to it, but we will see what we end up with. I'm going to get the forge hot. I'm working in the gas forge, so I'm going to let it run so it maintains welding heat. So you'll just have to listen to the narration over the roar of the forge. I'm going to start by upsetting this in just a little bit. Try and make this a little bit more dramatic. I'm just working the corners down to keep the upset more centered. Put a little short point on this, which will be the point of our finial. And by doing this real blunt, it works that upset back into the bar and continues to upset the center part of that element a little bit. This is my setup for this, and we're just going to spread it, but I'm not going to shoulder it. I want this one to kind of be in the middle of the bar, I think. I'm going to go ahead and spread it some with the cross pin. start drawing this bar back away from there and thinning it in one dimension. I want to leave it three-eighths in the other dimension. This doesn't need to be real long, so I'll cut it off and then finish this little taper. This is just so it inserts and welds better into the, the fold of the other piece. Ready to weld in, just straighten this end out a little bit. This bar I just want a little short taper on. I think I'm going to just do it as a parallel taper as well.
find a mark on my anvil to see how long that is. I'm going to give this just a little bit of a scroll over effect there. And that will sit right in there like that. So do the same thing to the other end. the same length. Then I want to try and put that same little curve in there and going the same direction. I think that's pretty close. Maybe some adjustments when we're done. about halfway through. This just makes it much easier to bend. And if you got that right, those end up looking the same. And that's going to insert in there. I think I'm going to start forge welding this before I insert this though. I'm just using 20 mule team borax, just laundry borax. Because it really flows and gets down into the joint nicely. A nice light hammer blows to set the weld. I'm only worrying about the end right now. I'm going to work my way back. And I want to go ahead and insert this. Well, I still can. Make sure that gets fluxed. Now, this is going to want to fall out of here, so you got to be really careful with the handling it, manipulating it at this point. some flat jaw tongs that'll hold both sides. And that'll let that get welded nicely. So that's stuck. Now we don't have to worry about it so much. I'm going to continue to work my way up the assembly here. Still an awkward thing to hold on to, but much all welded all the way up now. Now we just want to kind of refine it so I'll switch to a heavier hammer. And I'm going to keep working this at welding heat. Said I was going to switch to a bigger hammer. Once the weld is set you can get away with this. I'll 
I'll come back and clean up this top end a little bit later. If you see anything that looks like it might be shearing apart, go ahead and reflux it and make sure you get that on the next heat. so I can flare that out as part of the finished hook. That really abuses your weld. You'll know if you got a good weld or not. Trying to straighten this out a little bit and even out my flared end. Welding does leave these a little crustier, so a good wire brushing doesn't hurt. And it doesn't hurt to work it clear down to a black heat, except that I still need to do some shaping here. I want to kind of mirror my curve up here with this. So something about like that I think is good. I'm going to put this in this vise. Flux and forge welding can sometimes leave a pretty rough finish on a piece. So do a good job wire brushing. But borax flux in particular can leave a bit of a residue behind that sometimes leaves a white film on the finish, especially under some sort of an applied finish, like a wax finish like I typically use. Sometimes where the flux is still at just there a little bit, you get this ugly white film. And to get rid of that, the best thing to do is give it an acid bath. So I'm going to let this soak in an acid bath for an hour or so, and then we'll come back and we'll finish up the hook. I gave this hook about a six hour soak time in the acid bath, and that really got all the excess flux and everything off, although there's still some forge scale on here, which surprises me. So another couple hours might be in good order, but I think we'll go ahead and finish it and then I'll decide. If I can wire brush that scale off, I will. My finial is just a little bit asymmetrical and I would like to even that up just a little. I think it will look better in the long run. So I think next I want to drill a couple of holes in here and then this arm looks like it can come down just a little bit more so we'll get it hot at the forge, do that, give it a last wire brushing and it should be done. Now be careful where you put your holes. If you drill this whole thing out and that forge weld isn't solid, this could break off. So you might put a hole right up here at the finial or maybe in here. I think I'm going to go with the finial. That'll be the absolute strongest location and I'm going to use countersunk flathead wood screws. So I'm just going to use a scroll fork here and 
see if I can bend that down just a little bit more. I think that looks better. I'm not sure these are exactly the same length. I thought they were when we did it, but looking at it, it just seems like it's not quite as exact as I would have liked. Make sure everything's still going to sit flat up against the wall. And then hopefully this will get the last little bit of that scale off. Some things I think the touch mark is a bit distracting on the front. So I'm going to put this on the back where somebody could look at it if they wanted to. But when it's hanging on the wall, you won't see it. Well, that'd make a good hook just for the sake of practicing a little bit of forge welding. You could tack weld these together with an arc welder or a torch so that you don't have to worry about them slipping or moving while you're getting it welded. And that would make life really pretty easy for you. And it's a great way to get a little practice on that skill. You can really tell if your weld's good when you start thinning out this end and spreading it widthwise. If your weld isn't good, it's going to separate and it's going to crack and you'll know your weld isn't good. But if this part is intact and solid, that's really all that matters. As it gets up here, you've worked the weld a lot less. It's going to be a little weaker. And as it starts to separate into the two leaves or arms or whatever you want to call these, of course, at some point, it's just not welded. It's just touching at that point. And that's not uncommon in ornamental work. A lot of times, the welds just kind of have to feather out. It's not a sharp line of demarcation where the weld starts and stops. It's often just kind of a gradual thing. So if you stress the weld in that point, it might open up a little bit. It isn't a big deal when the weld isn't structural. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Ring the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when I make new videos. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, and share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to support the channel financially, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. But as always, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.